This one's going to be fun. When does Log Writer do its work? And this question came in saying, I've read that Log Writer will write out the log buffer to the redo logs when a commit is issued or when it is one third full. Doesn't this mean we're always just wasting two thirds of the buffer? Because if the moment my buffer gets a third full and I dump it out to the log writers, well, why did, why did I have the extra two thirds? It seems a nonsense. We're gonna have some fun with a demo here. Now, I'm gonna turn off my video for a second while I set up. I'll be back in one second, bear with me. Hopefully you can all see this. <laughs> Please don't panic, this is not a urine sample. <laughs> this is just a water jug and when I put clear water in it, you couldn't see it on the uh, video. So I um, just added some dye to it to make it give it some color. So what I've got here is database activity coming in. Read your log buffer down here. Log writer. Read your logs down here on the floor. So we're going to mimic here some database activity. Data activity is continuous. People just continue to always do work. They're always going to be doing work. This is my really log buffer. So when it gets a third full, log writer has to spring into action. So let me start my transactional activity. There we go. We have workload going on in the database. Now the question was when it gets to a third full, does everything have to stop? No, it doesn't. So here we have my log writer. Let's, let's, let's add some more transactions. Here we go. Now it's about a third full. So what do I do? The log writer comes along and dumps it out to disk. Oh, it's a third full, come along, dump it out to disk. Now, while I'm dumping out to disk, you can see the log buffer is still being filled up. It's still being used by other sessions. So even though I'm dumping it out every one third it gets full, it's not a problem. The reason I need that extra two thirds is because while I'm busy writing away, transaction activity can continue. That's why we have this thing of, oh, it's a third full, get in there, dump it out to disk. Oh, it's a third full, get in there, dump it out to disk. Maybe it's not a third full, maybe it's only a tenth full. Oh, someone committed. Yep, grab that, make sure it's on the reader log files. And that's how the log writer works. I better stop this before I blow up my log buffer. Okay, let me pause for a second while I uh, clear my desk. And we're back. And that is how the log writer works. Conceptually, let's have a talk about what's actually going on here. Your session is writing to the log writer and then it gets dumped out to the reader logs. I wanna stress here, the reason I put a few diagrams on here as well is it's not as simple as one water jug, etc. That's conceptually what's going on. And, that, and that's fine to think about it that way. But times do change. The way it works in real life nowadays is a little bit more complicated. Obviously, multiple sessions want to write to the log buffer at the same time. And to do that, they have to, be, they have to make sure they don't ask for the same piece of memory. We can have one person writing to here in the log buffer and someone else writing here. As long as they're not obviously overlapping, we're not going to get a corruption. To control that, we have a thing called the redo allocation latch. And there are some other latches underneath it called the redo copy latch. But that's how we get access to different parts of the log buffer. What happens is, in terms of a more modern diagram, is from Oracle 9 onwards, we realized that we could actually have multiple log buffers. So it's not just one log buffer anymore. You'll see this in heaps, you know, your, your standard documentation. The log buffer is not one thing anymore. It can actually be more than one. And what happens that that now gives us the ability to have multiple redo allocation latches. Whenever you have more latches, it means we have more concurrency. More things can go at it at the same time. We don't have hundreds of sessions competing for one latch. We can have multiple redo allocation latches now because we have multiple redo log buffers. That's the first thing that my little diagram with the water doesn't show, but that's a more modern view of how the redo log writer works. We have more concurrency and scalability now. Exploring that a bit further, every time I want to write to the log buffer is when I do a change in redo. That seems sensible. And you might be thinking, well, here's a simple update. I've changed one row. That's one chunk of stuff that needs to go into the redo buffer. But it might not be. It might be to update that one row, I've got to change the table row. 
But what if there's an index on the employee name? Well, I need to delete the index entry for Michael and replace it with Mike, if that's what the update is. What if there's an index on department number because it's a foreign key? If it's going from 30 to 20, I need to delete the index entry for 30 and replace it with an index entry for 10. Oops, that should be for 20, shouldn't it? If I'm setting it to 20, <gasps> database corruption. You get the idea. A single update of a single row has five changes going on. What does that mean? Five chunks of little bits of things going to redo, five chunks of getting the allocation latch. That's obviously perhaps a concurrency limiter because every time I go for a latch, I might be blocking someone else. Plus, there's all the undo. For all those five changes, there's the undo information to roll it back. So we've got 10 small little chunks of changes here that actually can try as just one update. And all those 10 might be actually asking for the redo allocation latch. Can we do better? Here's our second modernization of my diagram and demo. We have multiple log buffers. We also have these things called private redo buffers nowadays. And unlike the log buffer, which is shared by all sessions, the private redo is given to a particular session. So a session no longer has to write directly to the log buffer and compete for the allocation latch. It can write to the private redo area. So now when you do that one row update, which results in lots and lots of little tiny changes, they can all be sent to this private redo area. I no longer had to compete for that redo allocation latch. When the entire chunk of work is done, when I want to commit that transaction, now I can copy it in one hit to the redo log buffer. And I have to get the redo allocation latch for that, but I got it once as opposed to five or 10 times. That improves concurrency as well. And we have multiple private redo buffers. Right? You'll see that you hear them referred to as strands and a session gets allocated to one of them. And that's how the more modern version of this diagram. Now, there's a lot not covered here, but I stress there's a lot that we don't need to cover here. I put this here just to make sure that people don't accuse me of lying with my demo of the water. And that hopefully brings your knowledge a little bit more up to date with how we've improved redo over the years, over and above the old style of single log buffer, single latch, etc. That's about as much detail as you need. You don't need to understand the incredible intricacies here. Just know that now that Redo is, has greater concurrency and greater availability.